From Wakefield, it's the Nolan Card Night Show starring Nolan. My name is John Nolan as guest this week, Liam McGill to the show. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here's Nolan. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to episode nine, I believe, of season three. And it's a big one this this go around. It's ep- in total, it's number 40. And as, as those big numbers come around, I had to get a big guest on, someone that <laughs> That, that I, I hold a, a a similar place and as well as a former alma mater of South Kingstown High School. Yep. Um, he, he, we both share a fond memories of, of a legendary coach of his, Jimmy Sorrow. Um, <laughs> but no, I, I had to have another big guest and I'm so grateful that this person took the time out to do this and without further ado, I'd like to bring on my guest for this week, Liam McGill. Thank you for coming on this week, sir. Yeah, absolutely. Happy to uh, help a fellow uh, rebel. Well, of, of course, I, I, I thought, well, who I want, who do I want to have on the show? And I said, well, let me look. And I th- thought no further of yourself, especially since your name has been one of the uh, bigger names to uh, succeed at South Kingston High School and then, you know, make a, a mark in terms of post playing because South Kingston is not necessarily known all the time as a, a big crop of prosperous uh athletes um but as i usually do with my guests i like to catch up so how's the life of liam going on during this wild time that we find ourselves in uh yeah it's, it's pretty good um yeah it's been a crazy last couple of months i actually just uh finished my first uh professional season so um flew home on saturday um and actually i'm in new york city now uh just catching up with uh some friends in the off season and uh yeah it's uh it's been a cool cool time um fun last couple of months and uh yeah lots changed yes that's it's it's been it's been interesting uh to uh see it from a a, a far away glance to see how how well you've done the last few years but now that you know all this time is now not with baseball what's what's on tap for the uh schedule now that you got this uh opening in in your day-to-day schedule yeah yeah i think it I think uh, first thing is just uh, relax and uh, give my body a break and uh, have some some fun with some friends, spend spend time with loved ones, um, hang out, and then kind of see see where we are in a few weeks, and then go from there. Um, yeah, I think I think rest and recovery is big. <laughs> playing playing a lot of baseball. Um, yeah, definitely. That's that's number one on the agenda right now yeah, every, everyone likes a little r and r um now me i don't play baseball i didn't uh play in high school i didn't get, um experience that um but for, for from a uh, fan's perspective i'm curious on what it's like to be playing professional baseball and does it have any you know bigger impact or just play it more special role for yourself seeing as besides yourself your brother and maybe a handful of other people from around um to play professionally yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I mean, the whole situation with COVID and everything and then switching schools um, and, you know, being able to play another year at, at Bryant um, and then, you know, having the opportunity to play professionally, um, you know, that's obviously a huge honor. And then just kind of switching over um, and, and seeing, you know, what professional baseball is like. Um, yeah, I think you know, trying to get adjusted to that, um, obviously playing every day, um, in a college season, you're playing three or four times a week professionally, you're showing up every day, um, you know, being expected to play. Um, that's, that's definitely a little more grueling on the body, um, there. And then just the speed of the game, everything's faster and, um, a little more crisp at the, the professional level. So I think that was one of the, the biggest, uh, adjustments people have to make. And then, um, just mentally, just knowing that as you get, you know, move up the ladder, it gets harder and harder and, you know, having the ability to deal with failure. That's, that's another important aspect. Obviously, you know, mentioning men- mentality, you know, physicality in the sport for you, um, obviously this is your first year. How much for you was it mentally, I don't want to say challenging, but, um, effect in terms of, you know, adjusting from, you know, high school being different than, you know, playing college and now you're baseball where, you're playing with top guys and you're playing every day or at least almost every day. And you're, you're expected to have this high level or else, you know, you're not going to be on the team. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think like 
Um, when I got down there, one of the coaches was like, Hey, do you, do you feel like you belong yet? Cause like, I think everyone questions that as soon as they enter the, uh, the pro ranks is like, well, these guys are bigger, faster, stronger, um, games, a lot faster guys are throwing harder, hitting the ball further. So, um, yeah, I think the, the talent gap there, um, you know, everyone's on the, a lot, a lot more even playing field and, and mentally that's a, that's another big part of the game. Um, that's important. And I think, dealing with with failure like I said is important and just knowing that hey like I might not do as well um here but you know you know if I get out this about you know I'm one one more back closer to my next big hit or hit there I think to, to look at it um and just enjoy playing baseball and just really just understanding that it's a game and, and having fun with it I think that's another big aspect um, I think that's kind of a big thing that teams are pushing is the mental side and, and kind of having mental coaches. And that's, that's kind of next step for teams evolving. Um, that's a huge aspect. Now, obviously we're, we're in um, an interesting time as, as people have said, and you can associate with that with the pandemic and athletes, you know, got that extra year of, uh, about, I can't speak of eligibility and you played at Columbia and then you had that extra year you played at Bryant was was the was it base was it going to Bryant instead of let's say I don't know doing another year at Columbia purely for you know that um, COVID of eligibility or was it you know to have the opportunity to play in you know your home state of Rhode Island um well yeah when COVID hit and um you know everything was kind of shut down there was a lot of uncertainty um, but, but one thing I knew was that I, I couldn't go back to Columbia because they actually didn't allow grad students to play oh, okay. uh, in the Ivy League. So uh, I was finishing my undergraduate degree there and knew I had to go somewhere else. Um, so that made the, the decision to leave Columbia. I probably wouldn't have left Columbia just because, um, you know, I love this school and, and the experience overall. Um but yeah, so I, I knew I had to find a, a home, um, didn't know where. Um, so I, yeah, definitely took, took some time in the process and, and kind of saw what was out there. Um, you know, I could have gone to, you know, schools down South or like out West, uh, if I really wanted to and explore that, but, um, you know, being that there was a lot of uncertainty, I kind of wanted to be close to home. Um, and, you know, narrowed my choices down to a lot of schools in the Northeast. And then the coaching staff at Bryant um, with Coach Klosterman and, and Coach Pelletier and Coach Herville. And, um, you know, they, they were great. Um, and, you know, in the recruiting process, they, I thought, you know, that was the coaching staff I was most, most comfortable with. Um, that was a big aspect. And then, like you said, being close to home, I was able to go on, home on the weekends. Um, you know, in the fall um, and just kind of have my parents at a lot of the games. Uh, that was nice. And, uh, you know, being, uh, you know, knowing some of the guys on the team that that also helped. So overall, I, I thought it was a, a great decision and looking back on it, it really paid off and, and helped me. Now, what I, what I also, you know, kind of want to talk about is you, you very much so left your mark at Columbia and then the lone year at, um, at uh, Bryant in terms of, you know, awards and honors and that sort of stuff that, that must, you know, give you a sense of, you know, accomplishment and pride to, you know, leave some sort of impact at, you know, both schools. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's tough to, tough to uh, leave an impact at, at Columbia when you got, you're competing with uh, Luke Gehrig. Um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, I think my brother, you know, he said the best, you know, the biggest, uh, you know, biggest impact you can have or, or leave is just being a great teammate and a great person. And I hope, you know, I have a lot of friendships and I think that's kind of the most memorable thing that you, you get from having, um, you know, playing on these, these teams. Um, you know, I made a lot of good friends at Columbia, obviously. Um, but then, you know, just having that year at Bryant, just really enjoying and knowing, you know, this is my last year of eligibility and just enjoying the baseball and, and then just making uh, friends, um, you know, just enjoying playing with them. And, and I thought, you know, just the purity of baseball then was, it was a lot of fun. Now, you know, 
you're a, a very uh, solid, I don't want to say solid, great athlete in terms in, in, for, for baseball, but, you know, getting drafted, you know, is another thing, you know, you could be a great athlete, I would think, and, you know, not even get drafted. Walk me through that sort of, you know, m- that, you know, experience in terms of how, how you, you dealt with that, you know, because w- were you confident enough that you could get drafted or was it just like, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think probably more so the latter. I'd, I'd say if it happens, you know, it happens. Um, you know, I had my brother's experience and this isn't kind of knew um, what it took to get drafted and, and have that, um, you know, it kind of, that gave me a better idea, but I know, I know it's extremely difficult. And then with the draft being shortened to five rounds last year, and then this year being shortened to 20 rounds where it's typically usually been 50, um, which down to 40, but now it's a lot shorter, makes it even that more competitive. Um, there and and you know when you play against a lot of these baseball players you really know that there's a lot of great baseball players out there so um yeah i think i just looked at it as you know if it happens it happens but um if not you know i think i i could end on a happy note there too um yeah so obviously having that opportunity was really nice um i didn't know uh, what to expect. I had, um, you know, an advisor who's now like my agent and I uh, talked to him and he kind of reached out to teams on my behalf. Um, got a few teams that were interested. And then on draft day, um, I was actually playing wiffle ball with my nephew. I got like a text and I was like, Hey, um, this is Brian from the Atlanta Braves. Um, can you give me a call back and give him a call back? And he said, Hey, we're playing on drafting you in the, the 10th round. So then you kind of, focused on that and turned on the um like uh the video and um yeah in the ninth round I actually got drafted and I was like whoa because <laughs> we were waiting for the 10th but uh yeah I mean it, it happened and uh yeah it's a huge honor and, and um so so happy and some you know you you look back on and you know have that for the rest of your life say hey I was drafted by the Atlanta Braves so it's pretty cool that must. I'm sure that was a a roller coaster of emotions, and I'm sure uh, quite nervous to say um, the least. I'm sure it also was you know comforting in the sense that you had your brother who had gone through that same process to kind of you know help you calm down and not be so worried and anxious about it. Yeah, yeah. Sean he lives in uh, Florida now, but um, he he usually comes back for two weeks during the summer. He actually was up here, so he was at the house when it happened. Um, he, I think he was more nervous, excited for me. He, he was like, Hey, what are we doing today? Are we just watching the draft. I'm like, I don't know. I'd rather, I'd rather just hang out and, and, you know, uh, do that. But, um, yeah, I mean, he been a huge proponent in like my baseball career. Um, just a role model overall. And, um, you know, it's really cool to have such a good, you know, big brother and, and role model to, to look up to. Now, you know, getting, you know, playing college baseball is one thing, getting drafted is another, but then, you know, maintaining a roster spot and maintaining some sort of career in this um, after um, college is another thing. It, uh, walk me through, if you can, or explain to me, you know, the different, the level of difference between, let's say yourself starting out compared to someone who's, you know, one of the top in, in the minors or someone that's, you know, at the bottom of the pecking order in terms of, you know, the league above. Yeah. Um, so are you saying like prospects? Like, you know, like in, ter- in terms of like what needs to be done, like the, in terms of, I, I guess you could, I don't want to say work ethic, but like you have yourself and you get drafted, but then there's players who are above you who then are better. And then there's a whole nother level. So like the type of, you know, work that needs to be put into, or, you know, what separates you from, from them. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think, I think, you know, the biggest thing in, in minor league baseball is just, you know, getting reps and being, uh, having the ability to play every day. Um, I think, you know, typically it takes a minor leaguer like two, 2000 bats to have the opportunity to, uh, you know, reach the majors. Um, so there's that just getting those reps, but then there's also, um, you know, I, th- I think it's no, no, um, it's not hidden that, you know, teams push along prospects. Um, so, I mean, those guys are probably going to get more opportunities, the, the higher ups, 
Um, just value those guys and have invested more money in those players. Um, so I think that's a huge thing, but I mean, I think you just have, you can't take any opportunity for granted. You have to um, work extremely hard and, and just like the off season. I know there's a lot of things I need to work on, so I'm going to work on those. Uh, and then, you know, you just uh, have to give it your all and, and just enjoy the process and, and work as hard as, as possible. And then at the end of the day, you know, see how cards fall there. Um, yeah. Now, um, although I didn't play, I, I watched from time to time the, the major leagues, so I, I'm tuning in. I, I'm, I'm not a Red Sox fan like the majority of the people in, in Rhode Island, so I often get flack for that. Um, I, I am I'm a Yankees fan. It's just sometimes hard, and you know you don't want to admit. But the season is coming to a close, and as a, a, a I would hope, you know, you'd be a big fan because you – are playing professionally now. Do you do you have a prediction in terms of who's gonna win the AL East? Because it's, it's oh the AL East. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think uh, I think uh, the Rays have it wrapped up. So I think the Rays would win the AL East. Um, but then I think are you talking about the the wild cards? Yeah. Um, yeah. Red Sox Yankees tonight. That's a big series. Um, they got Cole pitching. Um, I mean, I would probably take the, the Red Sox, um, cause they're riding with the, uh, the yellow jerseys, yeah. the, uh, connect. I know all the, uh, guys, um, in baseball hate that saying that, you know, these jerseys are helping us win, but, um, whatever helps you. Um, yeah, yeah I mean, I, I like the, uh, the, the team com- camaraderie and everything that, uh, the Red Sox have going for them. And then. I don't think you can ever count out the Yankees just with yeah. their, their lineup. Um, it's always scary playing the Yankees. Um, just know that they can leave the yard. Um, so I think that's something. Uh, but yeah, hopefully the Red Sox can make a run. And then on the other side, we got the Braves who are, are looking good. So yeah. maybe Red Sox Braves. Uh, I wouldn't mind that. Yeah, no do world. You, where do you? How do you? How do you uh, deal with that? I mean, coming from Rhode Island, who which is a uh, heavy Red Sox fan and then you are playing for the Braves how do you how do you uh how do, how do you rule for that or how do you uh rule for a team yeah I mean I think I think once you start playing professionally and you know the team becomes your employer I think you have yeah. to uh, yeah yeah your all your loyalty um is entrusted to the uh the team that employs you so yeah I'd say I'm a a Braves fan now. I watch a lot of Braves games yeah. and then watch what the major league club's doing. I think um, the more baseball you watch, there's a lot more um, you can learn and kind of just um, looking at the little things. But yeah, go Braves, hey, chop on. Hey, uh, you, you got to, because, you know, they're the ones signing the uh, check. So y- you got to do that now. I, I've been curious in the sense, and, you know, I, I mean, it always happens every every year how it started out the Yankees were doing awful the Red Sox were doing decent and then it sort of switched and then now the Yankees were doing well they looked like they were going to win the the division and then they were top of the wild cards and now it has switched as a baseball player how do you decipher this how do you you know pinpoint how these things both switched in terms of their success recently yeah um I mean I think pitching's pitching's key like Obviously, that helps playing behind that. So when pitching's hot, uh, I think you're going to play um, play well. But uh, yeah, it's 162 games, a long season. There's going to be ups and downs. Um, hopefully, more ups than downs. Um, ride the momentum. Right now, the Red Sox are, are feeling good, and I think that's that's a big aspect of it. Um, but yeah, I, I don't I don't know exactly like the analytical oh, yeah. side. I, I don't know what to account for um, such these swings, but um, it's definitely been a fun season to watch. And I'd say the AL East is one of those divisions where it's really super competitive and and fun to watch. Uh, Yeah. I I would probably say that pitching is, if you're going to, if you pitch well, you're probably going to win. And if you don't, um, you know, the Red Sox weren't pitching well there for a stretch and that, that hurt them. Um, But yeah, with the sale back and kind of the staff going, a little better than usual. I think, um, yeah, that's, that's important. 
Well, on the other end, I mean, it's it's just, it's just it's it's interesting to see that three three teams from that division could potentially make the playoffs. Unfor- unfortunately, not everyone can make the playoffs, and you have teams such as the Orioles and the Marlins who seem to not be able to to figure out what is going on. How how, and, um, how do you attest to that situation where these teams can't seem to figure out? how to produce success year after year. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I would kind of attribute that to, to player development and like investing in your players um, on the, like this side of the Orioles um, just looking at like the Tampa Bay Rays, they invest heavily in, in player development. Um, their farm system, when you look at it, it's always loaded. All their minor league clubs are usually top of the division that they're in. And uh, when we played the Rays, they were always very good. Um, their pitchers, you know, threw the ball, um, pounded the zone, strike zone, and, and threw really hard and had really nasty stuff. So um, it's, it's interesting to look at. I think player development is a huge aspect that gets overlooked. Obviously, the, the Rays are a small market team, and they're competing in one of the uh, – with two of the biggest clubs. Um, so I think that that's something – Um, And then the international market, um, teams that invest in that, that's another way of gaining talent. Um, So I think that's important. I wouldn't say, I mean, my brother coached for the Orioles and I was talking to him about it. He said, typically the Orioles don't invest as much in the international market, say, compared to like the Tampa Bay Rays. Um, So I think that's another interesting point. But yeah, I mean, they have the Orioles have one of the best prospects in baseball right now, Adley Rutschman. I mean, he's going to be a stud. Um, but you guys sur- surround the. Uh, it takes more than one guy. You're going to surround the club with a lot of talent, um, and you know the Rays. They have that. Um, I think they have a good model of how to build a club. Well, let's uh, hopefully, hopefully they can turn around because I would hate, or you know. Jeter, after getting inducted into the Hall of Fame, he, he uh, lose, loses uh, out on more opportunities with the Marlins. Now, I want to end with this. This is my, what I like to call the one-word challenge. And in this, I throw out a few topics um, that have some, you know, role or, you know, that you have some connection to and just get out, you know, a sentence or a word or two that you can think of. Um, so I'll start with the person, South Kingstown High School. <laughs> yeah, uh, South Kingstown High School. Uh, where it all started. I mean, yeah, it was, I, I enjoyed my time at uh, SK and, and thought it was a, a great school. Um, yeah, I, I would say, uh, yeah, just uh, like where it all started. Yeah. Um, Rhode Island. Oof, best state. I, 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 yeah, everyone says they've never met, um, you know, when they ever uh, ask where they were Rhode Island, they always say, hey, <laughs> never met anyone from Rhode Island, but I love Rhode Island as a state and think it's a place. Um, wouldn't want to live anywhere else. So, yeah, it's the best state. Jimmy Sorrow. Oh, Jimmy Sorrow. Uh, great coach, yeah. He, he was fun to play with, and, uh, yeah, I think he helped me a lot develop on the developing side, and, and he he knew how to motivate guys and, and you know, really get the best out of uh, a team. And I think you can see that in the way, like – SK baseball has been run and, and similar to your dad, you, you know, SK tennis. Um, it takes a great, great leader to have success. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, MLB draft. MLB draft. Uh, yeah. Uh, whirlwind of um, emotions. Uh, yeah. You don't know what to expect. Barry Bonds. I don't, oh. Barry Bonds. Juicer. Yeah. <laughs> you, Big you believe, juicer. You believe he did it? Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I think a lot of people believe he uh, took steroids and um, I don't believe he should be in the hall of fame just because technically it's, che- it's cheating. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's a big debate on whether or not people like him and Roger Clemens should be inducted into the hall of fame. So I think that's, that's another debate to have. Now, so who do you think will get in first and Barry Bonds or Pete Rose? Uh, I, I don't think either one of them. <laughs> Um, okay, then the last one on with Lee McGill. <laughs> Lee McGill. Uh, um, <laughs> a baseball player. 
Well, I, I want to thank you, sir, for taking the time out and doing this with, for me this week. I, I greatly appreciate it. it means more than, you know, I can express. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for uh, having me on and uh, good luck with the rest of the uh, and uh, I'll be uh, eagerly watching. Yes. Well, for all you out there, if you enjoyed or watching or listening to what you do, leave, do us a favor. Liam des- really wants you to do this. Leave a like, subscribe to the podcast, follow it. It, it, it helps because later on the road, when Liam, Liam wins the World Series, multiple World Series, you're going to look back on this episode and you're like, holy crap, this was amazing. So do us a favor. Do this for me. Follow on social media. Nolan Card Night on Twitter and Instagram is Nolan Card Night Show. Um, but thank you very much for tuning in this week. I'll catch you again in the words of Johnny Carson. I bid you a heartfelt good night. See you soon.